Hi, I'm Ron Netter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Netter. In this episode, we're going to talk about Bitwarden. Now, you may have not heard of that one before, and trust me, until a few weeks ago, I hadn't either. This is an interesting, uh, well, uh, technically, I guess it's open source, but it has a lot of potential to it. It's a password manager, but as I found out in the several weeks that I've been working with it, it's so much more. Now, the nice thing is it's multi-platform. It's Windows. It's Mac. It's Android. Let's go back here. I want to double check. It's, yeah, in Linux. I mean, you name it, that they've got it. So this is something that I'm going to be looking at for my own possibilities because the interesting thing, and you've seen me do some other videos on Docker. Well, you have the option of setting up your own sync server with Docker. So you could have this all synced locally, or you can use their cloud or, I mean, the, the bit, um, the bit warden cloud. I keep wanting to say bit defender. That's right. Yeah. Bit warden. Now the interesting thing is I'm going to look at this as a dual approach. I don't want to expose anything on my home network. So I'm going to have a Docker instance of Bitwarden locally to sync against. And when I'm out traveling, then I can sync with the cloud version if I would need to. And at the at very least, one can be a backup to the other. Now, we're going to cover that in a future video because that's a whole other possibility to, to deal with. And I don't want to get things too delayed in getting with uh, getting the process started on this one. Now, this content is also available as an Amazon Flash Briefing or Podcast Please go to techbyteswithrunnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description where applicable. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe right now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button, thumbs up. Now, we're going to talk, it's a several steps in the process. We're going to first talk about creating an account on Bitwarden. Then we're going to go through installing the Windows client, may even get around to the, uh, the Android client potentially, and then we're going to be talking about migrating from another password manager. And actually, I'm going to, now that I've got this up on the screen, I'm going to, we're, we're going to walk through the process of creating an account, and then we're going to talk about migrating from another password manager because it's going to be easiest to do it, from what I've seen so far, to do it through the Bitdefender interface. And that's assuming if you're going with the, the Bitdefender, I'm, I'm sorry, Bitwarden. I apologize, I keep saying Bitdefender, the Bitwarden cloud. And that's what I'm going to start off with, and then we'll move on to the other. So let's get over here, and as you see, we've already got that up on the screen. And let's go ahead and log in. And there we go. And let me, I got to move a couple of things around here because I've got a bunch of stuff right on top of each other. So let's, uh, let's get the party started. So I'm going to go in with the account that I've set up. And then we will do, uh, no, I've, I've, created and blown this account away several times and no we're not going to save it now i've already gone through the process of creating an account to get started with and that was just to save some time because you've seen how to create accounts you you don't need to, to go through that again now i am going to show you one thing you need to do when you first get started and that's verify your email and let's well we'll go ahead and yeah we'll We'll do that, and we'll send an email, and then let me go over here on my phone, and that should come through pretty quick. Verify your email, and verify email now, and log in again. Okay, it's happy from there, so I'm going to refresh this, and then we should see a change in the screen oh okay your account vault is locked all right well obviously he doesn't like a screen refresh we'll enter the password and click on lock okay i did the password wrong okay well that's 
All right, I'll try it again here. And, okay, there we go. Now it hasn't, well, we'll ignore that for right now. So this is where you're up and running. Now I've already, I've been on another password manager for several years and I'm going kicking, I mean, I'm kicking the tires on Bitwarden. So now what we're going to do is we're going under tools and we will go import data. Now, most of your password managers will have some sort of CSV file export. And if you've not heard of CSV before, it's basically a, it's information from each record in, in this case, the, the password manager and it's comma delimited. So you've got each line is going to be one record and you'll have commas between the different data items. So it, if it knows about the program you're using, that's great. And, oh, it knows about exporting Chrome. That's got some possibilities. If you've got passwords stored in Chrome that aren't anywhere else, this is uh, definitely one you want to keep track of. And I'll click on the one that I've been using. And we will click on the file. And let's go to desktop. And where is my... There we go. I just did a fresh export of today and we will import data. And it takes a moment or two to populate things. And you can see everything that, that I've got. If you double click on the uh, different folders, uh, it will have things in there. Initially when I thought when I was, I would single click on it and it wasn't always coming through, but I found double clicking usually takes care of it so that's we're, we're you're up and running at this point so let's go ahead and let's install bitwarden and let's go here and click install and it's it's going at a decent well it's oh it's actually downloading another package okay so you may want to be on a decent internet connection if you're on a fairly slow one this may take a while i thought the install i downloaded was everything and it obviously was not now this has got a lot of potential to it because i've, I've been working with it on the android interface and that is something that if you have a phone we'll go ahead and run bitwarden and we will Log in. Did that one wrong. Okay. Had to uh, mute the mic for just a second and clicked on the wrong thing here. Okay. Now if we log in. And it's going to take us to so download that, that whole database. So if we go through and click here and you can see the different items. So really, that is, we're done. And we're talking under 10 minutes. The Android interface is very similar. And actually, I've had my cable disconnected. Well, didn't mean to hit that button. But let's go ahead and, oh, that's right. I can't show you the Android one because the Android phone's tied into the video switcher right now. So that is what it took to get things uh, up and running. And as you can see, that is, that's all there is to it. Now, if you have a, now I've got, of course, the Galaxy S9 Plus. If you've got a password, I mean, not password, if you've got a biometric sensor on the back, it will know how to use that. And that's just a matter of, plugging that in and let's actually let me throw caution to when I'm going to do the one thing you shouldn't do when you've got live video recording and I'll go into the spare port on the video switcher here I initially wasn't going to do this and then I decided well let's go do it so I'm not going to bore you with the installation process but now if we go through here and we go into Bitwarden and you can see it's, I've got biometrics already set up on it. And I will just press my finger on the back and it gets me in. So all this magic is handled. When you go under settings, you can enable 
the uh, you can able with the biometrics to be used. You can do a pin code. You can do two step log on, and you can have it auto fill. And these are things that I'm still kind of kicking the the tires on. But now this is what got me really interested. In. I've got well, let me, let me go back to the phone here for just a second, and I'll show you. As you can tell, I've got several different two-factor authentication packages in there. And this is something that, uh, especially when you're on a smartphone and I'm trying to log into a service, okay, I have to jump to the password manager, copy the fields back and forth from the password manager to whatever app I'm trying to get into on the phone, go back and get the password, go back and click it in. And then if i got two-factor th authentication, then I've got to go to yet another piece of the puzzle. So this is something that... If you can get a program to do this all in one fell swoop, that's one I would certainly look at. Now, here's where the difference comes in. There are, the to get you up and running, this is a free service. Even though you're using the cloud, they don't charge you for it. Now, if you get to have a pretty healthy password file or you want to store other things out there, or, and here's the magic thing, if you want to use two-factor authentication as a part of your password entry, and if we go over here uh, and we'll click on, well, okay, here's an account that's no longer in use. For example, this is, you know, what I, what I used to have an account at AWeber. You can link in if you subscribe to the additional service, and guys, it's very reasonable, or folks, it's very reasonable. It's a dollar a month. I think they bill you like one year at a time, so that's very reasonable. The what got me into looking at this is I was looking to happen to do an upgrade and I was looking at about fifteen to twenty dollars a client and that was Windows. I got Windows, Mac, Android, and iPhone. And I was going like eighty dollars. I'm going, no, let's let's look at other options. And that's what has me really looking at this one because once I've I've moved things over and what I would encourage you to do is when you're first setting this up export the the CSV file from your current password manager and then import it into BitGuardian. Now, once you've done that, don't delete your old password manager. Go through, and you're, this is going to be a pain, but you're going to need to do it. Go through and check all your entries. Make sure the passwords came over right. It's entirely possible that there may have been a, a glitch in the migration process. Make sure your categories are set right. Because when I first moved this over, it looked like none of my categories had matched up. Well, apparently I just didn't wait long enough. And it just it was just a matter of learning the interface a little bit better. So once I've done that, it's it's been very seamless to work with. So the next thing I'm going to do is set up the local sync server. And I'll show you how you get into that one. Let's go over here. Oh, actually, no. Do, do the right input here. And we will go into Bitwarden. It's a little little confusing. I had to go to them because they said, oh, click in the uh, upper left-hand corner. And I went, there's nothing in the upper left-hand corner. So if you go and exit. Now, I don't want to exit, but I want to, no, or do I want to exit? Yes. Okay, let's go back into Bitwarden. Ah, here, okay, cancel. And we are going to log out there. That's it's the step that was a little confusing. Now, once you go in, and you, and once you, you have to be at this screen to change to a local sync server, and you can give it the FQDN, the fully qualified domain name. I'm going to go with IP address because I'm going to have everything local at this point. And you see, you can really get under the hood with all this if you want to go above and beyond the you know a quote uh, regular. Uh, installation. So as you can see, this has got a lot of potentials to it. Again, give this one a try. I'm not making an, a dime for telling you to go to do this one. They don't have an affiliate program. And if they did, I wouldn't take them up on it because this package seems to have that much going for it. And especially with having all the information out there to do your own sync server so that way if you want to be totally disconnected and that's the way I'm going to run mine, I'm not going to expose ports out to the internet. So I'll sync locally when I need to, and if I'm going to be on a prolonged trip, then I'll revert over and go to the cloud server. So I've got more than one way to do it, which is handy in case, say, your Raspberry Pi server 
that I'm going to run this on has a problem. You have a way of getting a backup made, and I would periodically ex export the CSV files. You make any changes just to keep things on the uh, safe side. So really, this is one you definitely ought to be taking a look at. Now, having said that, and where's the... <coughs> I'm missing in control. Anyway, well, we're going to move on. Uh, we have... <coughs> Okay. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, okay, three, two, one. Okay, let's go back up here. If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll now see videos to the right or to the left of the next steps of the ones you've watched or other content that I have produced. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you on the next video. Take care.